I think there is a long debate on the issue of, for each country is how to modernize itself. We look at China really as an inspiration. So local people need to take their destiny into their own hands and that can only be possible by uh, giving them the right kind of skills. I want my country to really be part of the digital revolution. So I came here to China so that I can learn I believe that one day I will be the one who is giving this to children like me. Maybe 20 years from now or 15. Just let us see. 中国和非洲在实现现代化方面 over the course of recent years, Ethiopia, one of the world's fastest growing economies, has been striving to diversify its predominantly agricultural economy. In furtherance of this policy objective, promoting vocational education is of the utmost importance. This is the Lubon workshop located in the capital, Addis Ababa. This summer, the workshop is offering its first ever summer course. Zhang Jiang is discussing matters with an instructor working on the summer course. Lu Ban was one of the most outstanding craftsmen in Chinese history. The Lu Ban Workshop, named after him, carries the mission of promoting Chinese vocational education and international exchange. Zhang Jiang, who is the Chinese head of the Lu Ban Workshop in Ethiopia, has explored ways to inspire students' enthusiasm for learning. Yishan我们在中国的时候呢，我可能会准备很多理论性方面的知识背景介绍。后来我发现到了SLBI以后，嗯，同学们更倾向于在真实的这个工作环境中间去进行实践。所以我就把很多理论课程相应的减少，而增
这是我的一个毕业学生，他自己呃开了一个这个维修铺，两个马克杯上是他店铺的 logo， 叫做兄弟维修铺。他告诉我，其中一个兄弟就是我。其实，嗯、呃，这些年就是很简单，嗯，就是这种，嗯、呃，就像我们说，不断重复的这种幸福感，能够支撑我在这待了这么多年。我这些年教的同学啊，有很多从鲁班工坊毕业以后，嗯，取得了非常好的成就，有的同学呢，拿到了我们的奖学金，可以继续去中国进行深造。Jean Jean student Zagawi Alamo received a scholarship in 2019 and came to Tianjin University of Technology and Education to pursue a master's degree in automation and electrical engineering. In 2022, he participated in the first World Vocational College Skills Competition. Before coming to China, Zagawi Alamo worked as a teacher. He chose to go back to being a student again. Because he wanted to learn Chinese technology and take it back to Ethiopia to boost production there. In his hometown, many people work in the coffee industry. However, due to low levels of automation, many important production processes are still done manually. This significantly limits coffee output. To solve this problem, Jiang Jiang, who is on leave in China. Took Zagi Alamu to a company for specialized training. 经过鲁班工坊的学习，他们可以接触到以前没有机会接触的这种高端科技。After uh, finishing this uh, training in Lubano shop, we are returned back to our country to support our vocational、uh, schools as well as、uh, for young generations in use in in Ethiopia as well. Ethiopia, the design of vocational to move to it was to lay, but I'm not sure how to do it. Let me know. I don't know. Make me a tool. Luban workshop is a very important workshop, which links Asia, Africa. It's a very important link for the economic development in Africa by helping young people acquire new skills, which are necessary for them to become part of the economy. Today, China has established 33 Luban workshops in 29 countries across Europe, Africa, and Asia. These have trained over 10,000 people, providing a steady stream of skilled professionals to various countries. They become bridges promoting mutual understanding and cultural exchange between peoples. The universe is vast, mysterious, and awe-inspiring. Does the universe have a sound? In the wake of the Big Bang, what was the first celestial body like? Cheng Jifeng, an antenna technician at the Communication, Telemetry, and Telecontrol Research Institute, China Electronics Technology Group Corporation, is hard at work testing a newly constructed medium-frequency antenna. 往右转，往右转。Once this task is completed, he will travel to South Africa, where he will oversee the final installation of this telescope. SK is a very large international project to build the most sensitive radio telescope ever built, and it's being built as a radio telescope array. The name comes from the idea of having one square kilometer of collecting area. On March 12, 2019, seven founding members—Australia, China, Italy, the Netherlands, Portugal, South Africa, and the UK—signed the SK Observatory Convention in Rome, pledging to construct a giant radio telescope array. South Africa was chosen as the site for the SK's medium-frequency antennae due to its clear view of the southern sky and minimal radio interference. As the lead organization of the SK Reflecting Antenna Work Package Consortium, the Communication, Telemetry, and Telecontrol Research Institute (CTC), in collaboration with research institutions from South Africa. Italy and other countries has taken on the responsibility to construct the SK antenna structure. 
Because we're trying to detect such weak signals from almost the dawn of the universe, we need a huge collecting area. To achieve high resolution, radio telescopes must have a large aperture. Since the diameter of a single dish telescope is limited, astronomers use interferometry, combining radio telescopes around the world to explore the deepest mysteries of the universe. Uh, our Chinese colleagues, um, one of the big areas in which they're involved is the design and construction of the dishes. They have been incredibly innovative. Nadim Uzer is a commissioning scientist for the SKA project in South Africa. His role involves conducting scientific experiments to test the telescopes, ensuring all components are functioning correctly and monitoring the signals in real time. So here we are, Bruce, after a long road trip, the Karoo Array Telescope. Amazing, wow. KT-7, consisting of seven radio telescopes, is the precursor to the SKA project. So, here we are. Amazing. Cat 7. Beautiful. Yeah, you can see, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven is at the back. So what are the dishes actually made of? Ah, uh, it's uh, fiberglass. Wow, it's just like a surfboard. Same thing, same material. Just, just like touch it. And it's incredible to also look at these telescopes that are picking up signals that have traveled for hundreds of millions of years. They've crossed the universe to be picked up and captured, and which will give us the clues we need to unravel the you know, mysteries of the universe. The SKA project will probe into deep space to get data regarding the gravitational fields of pulsars and black holes. It will also explore exoplanets and potential life forms. SKA also has the potential to look back in time to observe the very first celestial bodies to emerge in the wake of the Big Bang. This project has been a long time from the beginning to the end. It has been a long time. But no matter how it is, it has been a challenge for human growth, for human development. It has been a long time. The SKA is many things. It's a science project, it's research and development, it's engineering, it's science diplomacy, pulling uh, countries and governments together to develop an international project. Uh, but above all, it's driven by uh, the insatiable curiosity of humans to understand our place in the universe. While radio telescopes gaze into space from Earth, Astronauts in space look back at our planet. What is it like to be in space? How does Earth appear from the cosmos? 18-year-old Abdi, a middle school student in Ethiopia, has a keen interest in China and its science and civilization. He's also fascinated by the mysteries of the universe and often discusses space and astronomy with his classmates at school. In December 2019, with China's help, Ethiopia launched its first satellite. It was a development that gave a further boost to Abi's interest in space exploration. Hurry up, let's go. In September 2022, the Talk with Takenots event was held at the African Union Commission headquarters in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. During the event, African youth interacted with the astronauts of the Shenzhou 14 mission on the Chinese space station. My first question is, what is the difference between living in space and living on Earth? How do you eat, sleep, and take baths in a wasteless environment? Space 
，为我们配备了百余种航天食品。瞧，有好喝的紫米粥。Since the Great Wall of China can be seen from space, is it also possible to see the Sahara Desert and Mount Kilimanjaro from the Tiangong Space Station? 在太空是看不到长城的。但是非洲上空天气晴朗的时候呢，我们通过舷窗可以看到撒哈拉沙漠、乞力马扎罗山。The event also had subvenues in Algeria, Egypt, Namibia, Nigeria, Senegal, Somalia, and South Africa. This marked the first time a major aerospace nation engaged with African youth via a live space-to-ground connection. We have with our friends China, China Africa Cooperation (FOCAC), and it is in the framework of this forum that we are organizing this meeting, where which I I hope will help to you know extension of of knowledge about about space science in into our youth in different parts of of Africa. J'ai une idée. Je pense que l'astronomie, c'est le fait de découvrir, découvrir l'espace, les planètes et tout ça, les étoiles, les constellations. I believe that one day, I will be the one who is giving this to children like me. Maybe 10 years from now, or 15. Just let us see. For thousands of years. Humanity has ceaselessly explored the universe. From observing the skies with the naked eye, to using telescopes to study astronomical phenomena, from breaking free of Earth's gravity, to landing on other celestial bodies, it's a quest that's gone on and on. Where there was once total ignorance, people today know of countless celestial bodies and phenomena, and the laws and principles that govern them. Thanks to international space science projects and events like Talk with Taikonauts, China and Africa are embarking on a journey of space exploration together. My name is Clayton Rudd, uh, originally from Kimberley in the Northern Cape. I'm 40 years old. I'm blessed to have a son and a daughter. My 12-year-old daughter, she's the more curious one. I usually explain to her the concept of the project. It's basically like uh, taking a magnifying glass, shining it on a piece of paper. Eventually, the piece of paper will set the light. This is the 100-megawatt Redstone Concentrated Solar Thermal Power Project, located 200 kilometers from Kimberley, South Africa. It is a renewable energy project jointly constructed by China and South Africa. South Africa has been actively promoting a low-carbon energy transition for several years now. Indeed, the country is well-placed to do so, benefiting from a number of natural advantages, including abundant year-round solar resources. Clayton Michael Rod is a mechanical engineer working on the Redstone Power Project. Today, he is performing the final inspection of the pipeline system before the chemical water commissioning test begins. Naturally, he is feeling quite stressed. The principle of molten salt solar thermal power generation involves using heliostats to reflect sunlight onto a receiver at the top of the solar tower, where the energy heats the molten salt, converting light energy into thermal energy. This thermal energy is subsequently transformed into kinetic, mechanical, and ultimately electrical energy. Chemical water serves as a vital medium for energy transfer and exchange, ensuring the reliable operation of the entire power plant system. Yes, we, we are finished, but we just want to run the pumps mm -hmm. on its own for about yeah, yeah. two hours, just to check if there's any problem, also to check if it's going in the proper uh, direction for rotation. 就像我们平时日常生活中用的开水壶一样，那些水都是未经过处理的，经常会发现有很多水垢，这些对我们这个机组的还有系统的安全运行是有很大隐患的。所以说，我们需要将这些杂质啊，还有一些不必要的元素，将它清理掉。Uh, the pressure was high at the start, but I think at the moment we have it under control. Each person knows his or her roles and responsibilities, what to do, when to do it. So I think we have it quite under control at the moment. In two days, 
the chemical water commissioning test will officially begin. But before that, the arrival of a group of visitors breaks the tense atmosphere. These children are from a local school. At the invitation of the construction team, the school organized a special visit for them. Among local people, the solar tower, visible from a distance, has long been a topic of conversation. This is our mirror assembly. These units can reflect the sunshine to the top of our tower. This mirror, mirror, um, apartment means the sun moves like a Yeah, every minute is move. Trick, trick the, the, the sun. The sun position like this. I really think that if they, someone sees something first, they end instead of just reading from the book uh, because the kids were quite excited. They had quite a lot of questions and they, 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 they were really amazed by this engineering mega structure that we are busy with here in the good project. I must say some of them, they even mentioned that they do aspire to come and work here one day. Two days later, the chemical water commissioning test was successfully completed. The power plant is now able to produce the healthy blood needed to perform the magic of converting sunlight into electricity. In early 2024, the Redstone Power Project was connected to the grid and put into operation. It is expected to provide approximately 480 gigawatt hours of clean electricity to South Africa's national grid annually. That's enough to meet the needs of around 200,000 households. Seen from above, the molten salt solar thermal power plant resembles a flower blooming in the desert. At the other end of the African continent, a similar desert flower quietly blooms in Morocco. This is the 150 megawatt North 3 concentrated solar power project. Officially put into operation in 2018, this provides 530 million kilowatt hours of clean energy annually to the Moroccan grid. In recent years, China has launched over 100 clean energy and green development projects within the framework of Forum on China-Africa Cooperation. During a critical phase of global energy transition, China and Africa are supporting each other by sharing green technologies and knowledge, working together to create a cleaner, greener, and more prosperous future. My name is Melissa, I'm 21 years old, I'm from Rwanda. I love fashion and I love e-commerce. Melissa's Chinese language partners are fascinated by Rwandan traditional dance, which is precisely why Melissa devotes her free time to teaching them. This dance is an integral part of Rwandan culture and one of Melissa's passions. So pretty! Aww, thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much. Um, this is like a woman's crown. It is mostly worn by mothers. Mother? Yeah, but sometimes girls just mm -hmm. put it for makeup and beauty purposes. Like you. Yeah. <laughs> Hangzhou is not only the birthplace of e-commerce in China, but also a hub for cross-border e-commerce. Melissa is studying at Hangzhou Normal University's Alibaba Business School. Her class is especially for students from Rwanda. Over the course of four years, students not only study specialized courses in cross-border trade, but also engage in e-commerce practices within China's digital economy. And my country is still struggling to set a base for online shopping, but it is also known that Rwanda has already begun charting on ambitious. In order to come to China, first of all, they were, uh, they chose students who passed their national exams. There were about 500 students. And then among the 500 students, they chose um, 100 students through application. And then we went for the interview. And then after the interview, they had to choose 20 students. So it was very competitive to come to China. Not only is China's digital economy experiencing rapid growth, it's also becoming a vital part of the global economy more generally. Through technological innovation and internet platforms, the digital economy has enhanced business efficiency, created new job opportunities, and driven market globalization. Now, more and more countries are seeking digital transformation. When His Excellency President Xi Jinping visited Rwanda in 2018, 
uh, Rwanda and China signed 15 bilateral cooperation agreements and one of them was e-commerce and from that point uh, Rwanda signed um, uh, the EWTP which is the Economic World Trade Platform uh, between Rwanda and Alibaba and that was the first country on the African continent to sign with Alibaba and from that point we started engaging uh, these uh, technology platforms to, uh, to sell our products. So it was that Alibaba Business School started training programs for Rwandan policymakers, entrepreneurs, and undergraduates. This ultimately led to the creation of the Rwanda class. In 2023, Summer break is approaching. Melissa wants to find an internship to apply what she's learned over the past three years. Hi, Dad. Hi. Hello, Melissa. How are you? I'm fine. How are you doing today? I'm fine. How is your studies? Yeah, it's good. I'm having my final exam this coming Monday. And then I will, after, um, find my, and get ready for my internship. Uh, I will find internships about uh, live streaming because I like it. It feels much more interesting to me to just sell online. I will gain a lot more experience and also learn about digital marketing and digital selling. So, I wish you good luck. Okay, Dad. Bye-bye. Please. Good morning. I've been doing a lot of fashion and advertisement part-time jobs. Like last summer, I worked for this company and I was doing their fashion adverts. And I think I can... A week later, Melissa was hired. Today is the first day of her internship. Hi guys, it's your girl Melissa. If you join and you are new here, don't forget to just go ahead and tap tap on the screen for me. And if you are used to be here, you can also go ahead and say hi in the comment section. For summer vibes, of course, we've got you different colors. Okay, number two, my darling is looking for number two. Yeah, this is actually my favorite. I love, love the, you know, the sleeves. We've got you different beautiful jollies. They are a little bit like stretchy. So if you want to fit in, in a different finger, it can definitely go ahead and fit in. There you go. I want my country to really be part of the digital revolution. So I came here to China so that I can learn all about e-commerce, all about the platform use and the data and information when it comes to e-business. I'm really looking forward to um, have my own business and I want to deal with it with all the knowledge that I got here from ABS and then I want to be a consultant through which I can maybe teach people from my country or elsewhere in Africa about how they can use e-commerce ideology to like uh, improve their businesses and their sales. 2000年中非合作论坛成立以后 中国和非洲就形成了越来越紧密的相互合作发展的这样一种关系格局 中国的现代化呢可以为非洲的现代化呢带来多重的机遇啊但这种机遇是相互的 We are really inspired by how did China do this modernization over a short period of time This will definitely inspire us to see how we can follow the same route that this, I'm not saying that this is we are going to copy it's not easy because each country has its own characteristics, but I think it will inspire us in different ways. We know that uh, China is um, uh, counted among developing countries, but when we look at it, actually, we see that they are really moving fast. We are really um, appreciating the speed of development and uh, we hope uh, that um, uh, we'll keep uh, the pace.